Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm actually here to kick off my first ever The Ultimate Fighter Season 15 recap videos. So sit tight, and actually, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm actually going to discuss the first two episodes. So sit tight, grab a bowl of popcorn, grab some snacks, grab some drinks, and I want to thank you all for joining me once again on another video <laughs> right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's, uh, I guess, Ultimate Fighter 15 reviews. Okay, so, alright, so just to, to explain to you all how I'm going to do these videos, these videos won't necessarily be reviews. There will be more of recaps, and when I say recaps, this is what I mean. Now, you all, for any of you all who are big MMA fans, and of course, if you're Ultimate Fighter fans, you know that the Ultimate Fighter is a uh, a reality TV show based around a real world competition where 16 fighters they compete for a six figure contract for the UFC, and of course, um, the competition is handled in tournament format where you have two teams. Each one is coached by a major UFC fighter, uh, this season being uh, Uriah Faber and Dominic Cruz. And, and then, of course, you know, we have the big finale. Uh, we have the big finale where the two, the two finalists face off. Um, the other competitors who have lost previously in the season, they have their own little matches, and depending on if they win, they could also get smaller contracts. And then, of course, at the next big UFC pay-per-view event, the two coaches face off, where this one will actually be uh, Faber versus Cruz uh, Part 3, and it will be for the, for the title again. So, but here's my thing. About, about the series I can't do this series like I can't review this series in the same way that I would do other videos why because they don't have a narrative not really it's it's a tournament it's a competition yeah we get to learn about the guys who are in the competition we get to learn about the coaches but there is no story there is really no plot there's no narrative it's just a competition, you know? It's like it's like having a fighting video game. It's just like the UFC video games. You know, the career mode doesn't have a narrative to it. It's just train and fight. Same thing. But here's my thing. This is what I want to try to do with these videos. What I want to do is I want to give you all more so of a critique. Well, no, not critique. A commentary. That's what I want to do. I want to commentate on each episode. So that's what these videos are going to be. They're not going to be reviews. They're going to be like recaps. They're going to be commentaries. And I'm not going to tell you all what happens in the episode because, of course, you all have, most of you have seen the episode. But, of course, because, more importantly, everything that happens outside the octagon doesn't really matter. It's irrelevant. What matters is the competition. What matters is the fights. And so these videos are going to be my commentary on what I think about the fights, what I think about the fighters, uh, what they did, the way they performed, what I think about the coaches, what their preparations were for those fights. Uh, and then, of course, if it goes to a judge's decision, what I think about the judge's decision. So all of that I'm going to discuss in these videos. So, I know I just spent like, what, the last five minutes explaining to you all what these videos are going to consist of. So, let's go ahead and let's jump into this. Now, uh, first off, I want to address episode one. I didn't want to make a separate video for episode one because here's the thing. Episode one, for the first time, they decided to do the preliminary rounds uh, or the qualifying rounds, if you will, um, live. And so, the whole event was like two and a half hours hours and um, I didn't even get to watch the ending of it because it was conflicting with uh, my OAW Grand Prix videos which was another reason why I had to discontinue those videos was because a scheduling conflict with that and the Ultimate Fighter um, but like I said I, 
I had a problem with the first episode having the whole thing be live and this was my reasoning for that because we saw 16 fights and even though they were only five minutes a piece maximum five minutes maximum a piece um, I'm sorry but I, I found some of those fights boring um, a lot of those fights went to the ground early uh, a few of them were dragged to the decision or to a late submission um, they weren't really explosive. I felt like the competitors, um, I, I felt like their main goal was just to get into the house and not to impress the coaches, Dana White or any of the judges. You see what I'm saying? Um, not that that's a bad thing because like I said, you know, this is real, this is real world, this is real world stuff. MMA is not like wrestling. Um, the main goal is not necessarily to put on a show, it's to win the fight. So, you know, these are athletes. These aren't entertainers. So from that aspect, I understand why. And I respect that. But as a spectator, um, it left more to be desired because the fights weren't very entertaining. Um, there were a few. Don't get me wrong. There were, a, there were a couple of fights that actually were pretty good. Uh, but most of them I thought were boring. And then, of course, the live format having to wait in between each fight. The reason why the prelims work in previous seasons when they weren't live was because all they showed you were the highlights of the fight. You didn't see the whole damn thing get dragged out. So, oh, and also uh, the presentation. In previous seasons when they did the prelims where all they did was show you the highlights, you had, you know, background music and stuff like that. When it's live, you don't have any of that. Not to mention, when they're fighting, you don't have people cheering. You can barely hear the coaches making their comments. The judges aren't talking. It's really fucking silent. It's really fucking quiet. And it's boring. I mean, shit, it damn near put me to sleep. Um, but, I will say this. Normally... Normally, I don't, I don't really care too much for the first episode of the Ultimate Fighter season, uh, especially if the teams aren't chosen within the first episode, like in this season. In this season, the teams got chosen at the beginning of the second episode. But what I do, this is what I do. I do take advantage of the first episode to scope out my early favorites. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and give you all my favorites now. Uh, a couple of guys who caught my attention. Uh, first off, uh, Sam Cecilia. Ceci wait. Cecilia. Sam Cecilia, um, of course, he got the eight second knockout, the one hit knockout. Um, he caught my attention. Um, number one, uh, well, to be honest with you all, um, he looks fit. He's a good-looking fighter, um, and that was the first thing I noticed when they showed him, you know. Um, he's kind of small, but he's really stocky. Um, short hair, you know, uh, got the you know got the beard, but it's, it's, it's not raggly or anything. And he's pretty well fit. He looks like he's a guy that works out. He looks like he has excellent cardio, um, and he has knockout power. So this guy caught my attention. Um... Another guy that caught my attention, of course, uh, Chris Tickle. But here's my thing. I'm not putting Tickle as, uh, as one of my favorites to win it all. And the reason for that being is because I have my doubts about him um, going the distance. I have a feeling, like, like once again, he had a 24-second a knockout. You know, apparently he has knockout power. Same thing. Uh, Good-looking fighter. He looks fit. Looks like he can, you know take some damage. Uh, it looks like he has a strong chin, too. But I question his cardio. I question if he can go the distance in a fight. Because when I look at Chris Tickle, unfortunately, I see uh, any of you all who saw the, um, I believe it was, was it the, uh, yeah, I think it was the Team Liddell uh, versus Team Ortiz season with Jamie Yeager. I believe Jamie Yeager was in that season. Yeah, he was. Uh, you all remember Jamie Yeager, you know, couldn't go the distance at all. At all. Um, same thing with your boy uh, Alex, a.k.a. Bruce Leroy from the uh, the, team's, uh, the Team St. Pierre versus the Team Koscheck 
season. Same thing. Knockout power. Uh, he can tap people out, but he can't go the distance. That's why Chris Tickle. He has my attention, but he's not one of my favorites because I, I, I doubt he has the ability to go the, the distance. Um, James Vick um, is one of my uh he he was one of the guys i was looking at like okay that guy's look good and then of course he was the first one up to fight which i'll get to that in a minute um michael i'm trying to pronounce his last name chasia i think that's how you pronounce him uh he's one of my favorites he he's he's actually my number two favorite to win um, Mike Rio is my third favorite. Uh, Mike Rio, you bastard. You took my MMA nickname. Uh, I found it kind of funny that, um, in, you know, I've been watching MMA for a couple of years and I never came across anybody with the nickname The Wolverine. So, uh, you know, my thing was if ever I went in MMA, that was going to be my nickname. But Mike Rio stole it. You son of a bitch. But Mike, I I'm rooting for you, man. So you better not let me down, dude. You better make, you better... Better show some pride with that name. Don't let me down. Um, and so the last one, um, the last, I guess my last pick, well, like I said, I had, let's see, Sam, James, Michael, Mike, that's four, um, but like I said, see, James Vick, same thing. He's kind of along the same lines of uh, Chris Tickle, where he caught my attention, but I'm not really rooting for him. Like, like he's not really one of my favorites. Um, but you know, uh, okay, yeah. I, I guess if I had to, okay, all right, because I'm taking, I'm wasting too much time. This is getting a little bit too, uh, too incohesive and convoluted. All right, my, I have three main picks. That's Sam Cecilia, uh, Michael Chesi, um, uh, Chia. Chiesa, Ch how the hell you pronounce that, and Mike Rio. Those are my three to win it all picks. But other ones that caught my attention are Chris Tickle, James Vick, Justin Lawrence, and Jeremy Lawson. Those are the other four that caught my attention. Anywho, so with the last five minutes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm giving you all my commentary for episode two. Um... Now, the fight in episode two, like I said, we had uh, James Vick, who's representing uh, Team Cruz. And just so you all know, I am rooting for Team Cruz. I like Dominic Cruz. I'm sorry. I don't like Uriah Faber. Um, I think he talks. I, 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 I don't like I don't like his persona. I don't like, you know, his his swagger, if you will. I don't like I just don't like the way he carries himself. Uh, and I don't like his face. Um, I, I just don't like his face. Uh, but Dominic Cruz, of course, Dominic Cruz, um, he is, you know, stand-up guy. He he's a he's a really diligent fighter. Uh, he trains a lot. Uh, he's real. He takes his training very seriously. Um, and when he goes into the octagon, he's all about business. Um, so that's why I'm going for Team Cruz. Yeah. Um, but so uh, okay, the fight was James Vick versus uh, Darren. Crook, Crookshank, or Crook, or Creekshank, Creek, Crookshank. However you pronounce that. Um, and of course, the match was decided in uh, by knockout in uh, in two minutes and sixteen seconds. It was actually uh, the match was actually decided. Um, what happened was um, Duran went uh, or Darren, I guess it was Darren. Darren went for a shoot takedown. He went for a um, for a double leg shoot takedown, and at that moment, James was bringing up his his right knee, and of course, uh, Darren's his head came in contact with James's right knee, and that's what delivered the knockout. That was the knockout blow. Um, so, just uh, just my thoughts on that fight. Um, when I when I was watching the fight. Um, at the very beginning, I was paying attention to. I, I, I like how the uh, the Ultimate Fighter in this season, what they decided to do was uh, they let you know what the game plan at the very beginning of the fight. They let you know what the game plan for each fighter was. I like that uh, because that 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 kind of that kind of keeps in mind uh, everything that that fighter's been working on, what they've been training on for that fight. And I remember that uh, that Darren or Duran, however the hell you pronounce his name. One of his game plans was to push the pace of the fight, to make 
uh, to make Vic fight his his fight. And that's where I think he fell short in this fight. I felt like Vic was in control in this fight. That he was the one who was pushing the pace. Um, if you if you if you go back and you rewatch the fight, you'll see that a lot of he is actually determining his opponent's movement based off of his movement. When Vic is moving, when he's maneuvering, he's making his opponent react to his movement instead of his opponent doing that. When you're trying to push the pace of a fight. You are the one that's supposed to be determining your movement and your opponent's movement. You make your opponent, opponent do what you want them to do. So that's where I felt like, um, that's where I think Team Faber, uh, that's where I think they fell short in this. where Because Vic was obviously pushing the pace of that fight. Um, but I would say that uh, decent striking between both combatants. Uh, I saw a lot of strikes got missed, which, you know, I mean, shit, it's going to happen. You got to you gotta let your hands go, and you're going to miss. But uh, I will say, though, that I think, well, no, no, both fighters, like I said, decent striking. Uh, they threw a lot, and they missed a lot, but, uh, you know, not, not every punch is going to be right on the button. Uh, I will recommend uh, for Vic in the future to uh, to really to really take his time with those strikes. Don't just you know throw 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 and hope to hit the opponent. When you throw, you know in the in the future, uh, I, I would recommend uh, Vic, uh, James Vic and Team Cruz that in the future. Uh, especially with Vic, uh, more precision punching to work on his preci precision striking. Uh, every time you throw a punch, hit something. Hit something. Um, because, of course, um, any of you all who do follow MMA, you know that just throwing all wild, that, that leaves you highly vulnerable to counter striking. And that'll get your ass knocked out. Case in point, Vandalay Silva, one of the best counter strikers in the uh ever. Uh yeah, you counter strike against him, your ass going down. Uh oh well, no correction. If you don't counter strike against him, your ass is going down. Um, so um also John, John Jones is very good at counter striking. So anywho, uh so yeah, like I said, that's pretty much gonna be what these videos are. It's pretty uh this video it's going to be a little bit longer than the rest because I've covered two episodes and also because I had to let you all know how I'm going to be doing these videos. But in the future, they won't be this long because like I said, I'll just be giving my commentary on the fight. So those were my brief thoughts on the first fight. Um, like I said, congratulations, Jane Vic. I thought he did really well because he used his opponent's game plan against him. Instead of having uh, his opponent decide the pace of the fight. He was the one pushing the pace. I think that is what gave him the overall win. Um, and the next fight, uh, next week's fight is actually going to be Justin Lawrence versus uh, Cristiano or uh, yeah, Cristiano uh, Marcelo. So, what I would what also what I'm going to do in every video at the end, I will give you all my prediction for next week's fight. Um, I'm going to give I'm going to give this one to Justin. Uh, the reason for that being is because right now, like I said, haven't seen Justin. You know, we've only seen all these fighters fight once, but I think what Justin has over his opponent going into this fight is confidence. Uh, Team Cruz has a, a one-win lead. They won the first match. Um, they won the first match. They also, I believe, they were the ones who got the first uh, draft pick. So their confidence as a team, as a unit, is up right now. And I think Justin's going to take that with him going into the octagon next week. Uh, they, they're on a they're on a confident boost right now. Um, 
But we'll see what happens next week. We'll see how both fighters train, and then we'll see what the game plan for both fighters are what their coaches have planned for them, and we'll see how that plays out next week's fight. So, like I said, thank, I want to thank you all for joining me this week. In the comments below, let me know what you think about... Um, let me, let, uh, first off, let me know what you think about the video. Uh, like I said, never done this before. Um, doing a video on sports, um, especially on MMA, and then, of course, on The Ultimate Fighter. Um, like I said, I apologize for the length. I know it's kind of lengthy. Um, but let me know how I did. Let me know what you all think. Uh, any any constructive uh, criticism and feedback is greatly needed. Um, and then, of course, let me know what you all think about this season, about the first two episodes, about the fighters, and your predictions for next week's fight. So with that said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief, signing off. And until next time, peace.